Studio 106. My name is Caleb Grisby. My name is Naomi Serrano. Let's get started with our first story. Have you been to the grocery store? There are no eggs. Nearly 6 million chickens have been wiped out from the avian flu according to the USDA. That has caused a significant shortage of eggs that's not meeting the demand. That's forcing the cost of eggs to increase. A dozen eggs will set you back to $12. One of the top egg producers in the country suffered a great setback when his Connecticut farm caught fire. 100,000 hens were killed in the fire. Firefighters from 21 department responded. It took eight hours to put out the fire. Fast food is damaging your liver. That's the cause of finding a recent study. The study found that a combination of a diet of fast food and lack of exercise can cause significant damage to your liver in just in a month. Increased fat in the liver, which can lead to diabetes and heart disease. Having trouble with homework? Artificial intelligence may have the answer. ChatGPT is an AI-powered chatbot that lets users have a conversation with AI. The chatbot is able to have long, thoughtful responses to questions the users ask. ChatGPT has a large database of information to create responses. With the technology comes concern that it may be used for students cheating. Want to buy some tickets for an upcoming concert? Well, it's most likely going to be done on Ticketmaster. And unfortunately, the site has been under fire by people all over America. The parent company of Ticketmaster, Live Nation, dominates the American market when it comes to ticket sales for live events. Customers are complaining about the extremely unsatisfying experience on this site. Taylor Swift fans know all about this. The site crashed due to its low security and performance during recent sales of an upcoming concert. Fans felt either ripped out of their uneasy as they turned to secondary untrustworthy markets, which were selling tickets up to $2,400 a pop. The welcome mat is out. Former president is allowed back on Twitter and Facebook, but he will be tweeting again. Lose the rainbow. You're making yourself look stupid, wrote one Facebook user. Find out why a famous album cover is causing a stir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Will he or won't he? Facebook and Instagram have lifted the one year ban on former President Donald Trump. The move is getting mixed reviews as users are taking the platform to weigh in their opinions. It's still not clear if the former president will return to the platforms due to his own truth social. Trump has now been invited back to Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. Dark side of the moon, but the anniversary is causing some controversy. It's one of the most famous album covers, a prism with light reflecting through it. In honor of the 50th anniversary of the band, 
created a logo for based on the image of their social media platforms. It's not getting the response they thought. Anti LGBTQ plus people have been calling the band woke and criticizing the rainbow. Pink Floyd, Pink Floyd fans are fighting back and the, the replies are hilarious. People in the know are setting the record straight about the significance of the rainbow. The iconic Eminem candies are out and Maya and Rudolph is in. Eminem spokes candies are being dropped from the packaging. The criticism from fans about the green Eminem shoes with the brown Eminem shoes have caused the has caused the company to remove the iconic mascot. Eminem also added a large purple Eminem saying they're trying to promote body positivity, which fuels criticism. It's 2023 and your ch and your childhood favorites are coming back. Yes, you heard canceled cartoons are coming back this year. One of the most popular ones is Clone High, having a continuation after being canceled abruptly 20 years ago. Yes, the reason for Clone High's cancellation is because of its depiction of Gandhi, which didn't sit well with the Indian audience 20 years ago. Another show that is coming back is Total Drama Island, with a, re with a new reboot and new cast of characters. It will be set on a fan favorite island camp, having 16 contestants and another chance at $1 million. The final cartoon coming back is Phineas and Ferb with two new seasons. The cartoon about two boys and their platypus is coming back after eight years with new adventures for them to go on. Let's hope these revivals keep true cartoons and make us laugh like they used to. The newest HBO Max original Velma has just released and it's being betrayed with hate from all fans. Not only does it have 1.3 on IMDb, being one the lowest rated TV show ever. The main character, Velma Dinkley, is now a schizophrenic Indian American. Shaggy is called Norvell and is African American. Daphne is Asian American, adopted with two moms, and Fred is a spoiled rich boy. From all the changes the show has made, it shouldn't last long, but that's not the case because reportedly, reportedly Velma has been renewed for a second season. Let's hope they make things better with the upcoming episodes or just cancel it altogether. Beyonce is facing backlash from her recent private concert in Dubai. On January 21st, Beyonce performed an exclusive invite-only concert for a luxury hotel. People are mad at her for performing in a country that is not LGBTQ plus friendly. Beyonce has yet to comment on these statements. Korean girl group Stacey announced the new single album with the title track Teddy Bear. It will be released February 24th. Last month, Tomorrow by Together released their new album called the, the Name Chapter Temptation. The title track is Sugar Rush Rye. American rapper and singer Koi LaRae is featured on their song Happy Fools. In other news, South Korean actor Sung Joon Gi announced to his fans on Fan Cafe that he will be getting married to his girlfriend, British actor Katie Lau Sanders. The two are expecting their first child together. Fans are happy for his new chapter in his life. Popular esports organization turned lifestyle band FaZe Clan is facing major financial problems. FaZe went public with their stock in the summer of last year and managed to double their, date, their debt price at $20 per share. Later in the year, their stock's price plummeted to around $2. And as of recently, two weeks ago, it dipped below a dollar. A failed $100 million investment along with esports organizations struggling to make profits out of influencers following have both contributed to phase downfall. When a stock's value goes below a dollar and stays there for a prolonged period of time, the company risks getting delisted from many major stock exchanges, putting phase clan in a bad situation. The Chiefs are rolling into Super Bowl on a tear. Sports is after the break.
Natural disasters are a fact of life in the U.S. And between activities and school, chances are you won't be with your kids when they happen. Will they know what to do? Ready.gov slash kids can help your children feel prepared, not scared. So talk with your family today. This past weekend was one of the biggest weekends of the year if you're a football fan. The AFC and the NFC Championships went down in Philadelphia and Kansas City. The first of the two was the meeting between the Eagles and the Niners. The Eagles were favored from the beginning, and they really came out to play like it. The 49ers were already down to their third-string quarterback, Brock Purdy, and uh, the worst-case scenario played out on the field with another injury for a quarterback. Fourth-string quarterback Josh Johnson entered the game for a few drives before Brock Purdy was eventually able to re-enter, and he was still unable to throw, though. The Eagles took advantage, dominating in their house 31-7. Now for the most highly anticipated matchup of the weekend, the, B the Bengals and the Chiefs. Throughout the week, the Bengals were bringing their absolute best trash talk to the game in the media, dubbing the historic Chiefs Stadium Arrowhead to Burrowhead. Even the mayor of Cincinnati got in on the fun, asking Bengals quarterback Joe Burrow if he would take a paternity test to determine if he was the father of Chiefs quarterback Patrick Mahomes. All week, the, uh, the talk of the town in Kansas City, however, was not the trash talk. It was the injuries. From star quarterback Patrick Mahomes to star tight end Travis Kelsey, there were lots of concerns in their ability to play on Sunday. But when the game started, you would have never guessed it. Mahomes absolutely lit up the Bengals' defense to the tone of 326 yards and two touchdowns. And Kelsey even added seven catches for 78. The Bengals had just enough to hang around and had a shot to take the lead with just under two minutes to go, but their drive stalled out. This game may be debated for a long time due to the odd mistakes all night by referees, but the Chiefs found a way to prevail in Burrowhead 23-20. This sets up the Chiefs and the Eagles to play in the biggest game of the year, the Super Bowl. It's uh, the most watched sporting event in America every year. And this time it's being dubbed the Kelsey Bowl due to the uh, two Kelsey brothers, Jason and Travis, playing against each other and being the first brothers to ever play against each other in a Super Bowl. This year's halftime show is going to be performed by Rihanna. Let us know in the comments, which part do you watch for the Super Bowl for? The commercials, the halftime show, or the game? The NBA All-Star uh, All game is just around the corner, and now we are just getting our first bit of news about it. Uh, the biggest change to the game this year is that the captains for both teams will draft their teams on the floor the night of the game, bringing more of a pickup style to the All-Star game. The NBA has also just announced the captains uh, and starters for the East and West. LeBron has once again found himself a spot at the top of the voting, this time at age 38, and has earned him the captain spot from the West. He is joined by two-time NBA MVP Giannis Antetokounmpo, in the captain spot for the East. They'll be drafting from a pool of NBA stars uh, that top coaches, players, and fans all voted on. The starters were just announced as Steph Curry, Luka Doncic, Nikola Jokic, and Zion Williamson from the West. From the East, it includes stars Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, Donovan Mitchell, and Jason Tatum. LeBron now holds the record for most All-Star selections, passing Kobe with 19. The bench players were announced uh, will be announced in the future as anticipation for the game builds. The game will occur this year on February 19th. The transfer portal massive change to the college football playoff is still adjusting to now and I uh, the transfer portal's massive change to cause the college football scene is adjusting now with crazy NIL involved. More than 3,000 student athletes have decided to enter the transfer portal this year alone. The sad fact of the matter is that while many of these players will be picked up by schools and get to play football again, it's likely a lot won't be selected and will be walking away from a scholarship at a school where they're getting a college degree for free. Kentucky has heavily benefited, however, from the transfer portal, bringing in multiple great players, including the best quarterback in the entire transfer portal from NC State, Devin Leary. The offseason is still only beginning, and there will still be a lot of players that are yet to decide if they're going to enter the portal or not. The, major, the new major uh, wrestling organization has made its way to Lexington after hosting an event in Rupp last week. Eastside's very own Riley Taylor attended the event. 
AEW generated a national audience to Lexington, and it looked like an absolutely amazing time at Rupp. High school basketball is king of sports in Kentucky this time of year, and Region 11 is taking center stage. And boy, has it been an exciting year. Lexington Catholic sits atop the standings at 19-2, followed by Great Crossing and Frederick Douglass. Offense has been the name of the game in this region, and Lexington Catholic has already scored over 1,300 points. Every school has about 10 games left on the schedule, and no school is truly ruled out of region contention yet. On the girls' side of things, Madison Central sits atop the uh, city, followed by Franklin County and Frederick Douglass. Unlike on the boys' side, defense has been the name of the game for the girls. These games have all been extremely scrappy all year, and I don't expect any change in that as we creep towards the tournament. Welcome to a new segment called Rapid Fire News. It's pretty self-explanatory, so let's go. Scott Rowland has been inducted into the MLB Hall of Fame, being the only player to reach the threshold needed in the voting. Novak Najakovic has uh, won his 10th Australian Open and ties the record for Grand Slam's wins at 22. Uh, Ilya Malinin, uh, a high schooler from Virginia, has won the first U.S. Male Figure Skating National Championship. Georgia quarterback and two-time national champion Stetson Bennett was arrested on public intoxication charges this week in Dallas. Cody Rhodes has won one of the WWE's biggest events of the year, the Royal Rumble, by defeating Logan Paul and Gunther in the final. On Monday, January 2nd, during the first quarter of the Bills vs. Bengals Monday Night Football matchup, Bills safety DeMar Hamlin collapsed after a collision with Bengals wide receiver T. Higgins. He lost his pulse on the field and was shocked to bring him back. He received several minutes of CPR before being transported by ambulance to UC Hospital in Cincinnati, where he was listed in critical condition. The game was further postponed and eventually canceled by the NFL. DeMar remained in critical condition at UC for several days before regaining the ability to breathe on his own. Days later, video and photos were released of Hamlin looking extremely happy and FaceTiming his teammates uh, prior to their Week 18 matchup with the New England Patriots. On Tuesday, December 10th, DeMar was able to travel back home to Buffalo and continue his recovery in a Buffalo hospital. After passing several tests, DeMar Hamlin was released the next day, just nine days after suffering a cardiac arrest. His story has raised awareness of his charity, Chasing M's Foundation, which raises money to buy toys for underprivileged children. It started out as a GoFundMe page with a goal of $2,500. After his cardiac arrest, it amassed more than $9 million. His family has moved the account from a GoFundMe page to an official nonprofit foundation, which will now include spending for education and youth sports. DeMar's family in the NFL thanks everyone for their continued prayers as DeMar will still have a long road to recovery ahead. Wow! Kentucky basketball is in the midst of a rough season as it's yet to show any signs of improvement. From struggles on the court to controversy in the media, nothing seems to be going right for our Cats. The Cats uh, welcomed the Gamecocks of South Carolina into Rupp in, that, uh, in a game that ESPN only gave South Carolina a 1.5% chance to win. Uh, South Carolina ended up coming out on top of that game, and the Cats will look to improve as the rest of their season goes on. Thank you, everyone who came to watch our studio at one, our fix at Studio 106, and we hope to see you next time.